Hi, I'm Joe Johnson, and I'm the senior pastor here at Goffstown Harvest Christian Church, and I'm glad you're checking out our program, which we call His Kingdom Now. You know, when Jesus walked on the earth, He was clear. He didn't come to bring another religion. He came to open up a relationship with God through the kingdom of heaven. And the most amazing news about this is we have access to that kingdom just as much as He does. And so what we're going to do today as we open up the Word of God is we're going to find out how the stuff works. We're going to learn what He said, how to cooperate with His kingdom, so that all of us can walk with God and see amazing things, not just in this generation, but we can know for sure that we can live with Him forever and ever. So enjoy the service. I look forward to talking to you at the end. How's everybody doing? Good. It's a good thing to be in the house of God today. I got some really, really good things to talk about. And you are in really good fortune to be here. Okay. Amen. Yeah, that's kind of I got some really good things to talk about today. And you are in good fortune to be here. All right. Well, Pastor, why do you keep doing that? Well, because what if we've got someone in here that's about to take their life today? And God sends them to this church, and I go, it's really great to be here. And you're like, yeah, okay, great. <laughs> we always have to be ready. We always have to be ready to be there to serve folks, to be there to represent the kingdom of heaven to whoever we get around. Did you know there's no off button with God? Like there's no off he could, any more than the sun gets turned off. He never stops. And if this is the play, this is the place that we get together a local assembly, a local assembly of called out ones to the kingdom of heaven. When we come in, we come in ready. All right, I, it's not Christian or myself. Well, listen, we stir up the gift of God that's on the inside of us, and it would make a lot of sense to make sure we do it before we come in to these doors instead of needing to come in here to have that done. Now, if you're just coming to Christ and you don't know a lot of things, we're here to help you. But I know most of you in here, you've been around Jesus quite a while. All right, like you, you, there's skill sets that you have developed because I know you. And if we recognize and understand, well, Pastor, you're, you know, you, you're the one up there teaching. You better be ready. Well, what if said individual I'm talking about plunks their ear in right next to you, and they get someone who's just like dead to space? You never know. One of the things that I appreciate when I was working with Kenneth Hagin Ministries, and I was on the ushering team. And they taught you to be aware that you set the atmosphere of the service by your first handshake when they walk in. You set the atmosphere. You, you don't know what folks are going through when they come in. And even folks that have been around Jesus any amount of time, you, don't, you know, the, the world out there can really wreak havoc with your head. It just, it's out, it, the Satan hates you, right? We've been talking about this. And so it's important if we can transition and get our minds from thinking I'm coming only to get something versus I'm ready right now for God to use me in anyone's life at any second. And yeah, that places some responsibility on all of us. But when you, when you begin to stir up that gift and you begin to expect, well, just like any vacuum, vacuums get filled. You begin to develop that in your spirit. You can count on the Holy Ghost being right there, <clears throat> right there to touch you and bless you on behalf of someone else, right? It's good to be in the house of God today. Yeah, yeah I'm going to learn something really good today. Yeah. I'm filled with God. Glory to God. That's a little bit better. Now let's see if we can, in the next couple of weeks, not need me to take three minutes to get us here. Well, we're going to have a good time today. What we're going to do is uh, uh, we're going to uh, review some things I've been talking about. It's going to be a little bit different. Worship team, thank you for uh, just uh, last minute work. And I, I gave them a little text this morning just to do two songs. Um, Pastor uh, Yoder next week, we're going to have a great time with him. He's been pastor a long time. He's an instructor at Rainbow Bible College. And... Um, uh, but with him coming in, that's I'm losing a week in this series, so I'm kind of condensing some things. I'm, basically, this is going to be two services in one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go about 15, 20 minutes, kind of uh, reminding us of some things I've been emphasizing, uh, have some new angles 
to some of the principal things we've been discussing. And then what I do want to do is, is we're going to take, oh, about a five-minute break. We've got lots and lots and lots of coffee on. And then what I want to do is, uh, on the other side, is we're going to, how many of you all familiar, if I, use, if I use the term next steps, you know what next steps is. Okay, next steps is, look, this is who we are, this is where we're going as a church, and we're inviting you to partner with us. Well, what I'm going to do is, and during the rest of the month of October, we're going to be talking about, I've been kind of at 60,000 feet talking about church and the church. And what we're going to do after Pastor Yo, after next weekend, is we're going to start really breaking things down as far as, far as rubber meets the road, uh, church activities, responsibilities. And by the time I'm done, I mean, I should have within the past couple weeks, um, I don't know how more clearly the scriptures, I didn't say me, how clearly the scriptures emphasize that we have got to be around one another. All right? The body of Christ is not a tribe. It is an entity. It is a living entity that is an extension of Messiah, who we know is Christ, and he has a human name, and is Jesus. All right, we're not looking for tribes. We are the extension, as, as surely as Jesus is expressed out of the Father, so the church is expressed out of him in his heart on the earth. Like, this is a really big deal. This is not about just simply going and being nice and... That's part of it, but by the time we're done today, in the first 15, 20 minutes, um, I'm trusting that blinders, some blinders are really going to be taken off on why we even do this. And I've said this through the years, listen, if this isn't really important, now it's getting a little bit cold to be playing golf, but I'd still be trying, I wouldn't be here, I'd be out playing golf, watching football, and making sure I've got some nice stout in the refrigerator, and Lots of food and maybe some other things too because I wouldn't care because I wouldn't believe any of this stuff was real anyway. But since I know it's real, there's disciplines, there's understandings I need to have, we need to have to understand the otherworldly, say otherworldly, the otherworldly realities that we have been integrated in. Your lack, I've said this over and over to get us into our head, our lack of sensitivity to the kingdom of heaven doesn't make it any less real or any less available. All right, Our job is through the word of God and the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus is to develop sensitivities to what is already real because we're learning and being reminded once again uh, what Jesus has integrated us into as joints and ligaments and sinews has absolutely nothing to do with a 4-H club or an optimist club. We are an entity. We are extensions of the second person of the Godhead here on earth. Well, pastor, that sounds pretty grand. Read the, well, not only read the Gospels, just read the book of Acts, and you tell me if that wasn't God on earth through the church. Right? And if we're not seeing or experiencing that, maybe there's some things we should understand. So let's pray, and we'll get right to work. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you that it is your good pleasure uh, to give us the kingdom. And I want to thank you that the number one, there's like gazillions of things the Holy Spirit does, but the number one attribute we're told, Jesus specifically in the Gospel of John and the Apostle Paul really nailed it, the Holy Spirit is our teacher. He's the one that opens up our heart, our spirit, our inner man to understand things that we couldn't possibly understand without his help and his aid. So... Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking for the Holy Spirit to have his way in this service. I absolutely depend on him to seize my soul, my mind, uh, to put sentences together that will be able to touch everyone here in this room. And for everyone that's here, in Jesus' name, I'm commanding peace comes into your heart right now. You don't need any distortion. You don't need to think about how mad you are at your boss or how late you were or how you didn't want to get up. You don't need to be thinking about any of those things anymore in Jesus name peace be still you need to learn something today uh, so father I thank you for these things now in the name of Jesus and everyone says amen, amen. all right let's get a little bit of work done here and um, how many of y'all know that the joy of the Lord is our strength yes. that means it's fun to be in the house of God yes. you know it's totally okay to hear something today and have your have your heart just come alive 
because you understood or get something, the light goes off. Technically, that's in the kingdom. The scientific term for that is a revelation. You know, when you have a revelation, man, the life of God hits because now you understand it. The, the understanding of revelation becomes a vacuum, a container for grace to be released into. So now not only do you get the concept, but the life of the concept comes alive in your spirit. You should go back and listen to that last statement next week. When And I know all of you review our services, right? Like when I go on YouTube, I should see 80 to 100 views, right? Not like three. How many of you guys watch, uh, what's it, raise your hand, what's like the, the, your favorite series is you guys like, and if anybody says Game of Thrones, the ushers are ex- escorting you out of here. I watched one Game of Thrones and I lasted less than 10 minutes and it made me sick. You know, what begins to happen is you begin, you'll, the closer you get to Jesus, you'll develop a distaste for things. He wasn't going to send me hell for watching uh, Game of Thrones, but I felt like I was there because my sensitivities wouldn't allow me to watch that. I didn't need a command. All right, the the spiritual tar that was coming on me by watching that, I didn't need a command. I didn't want tar. So enough of that. How many of you all have a favorite series? Of course, now I don't even know what I'm going to get now. But raise your hand. What what do you guys like? Who who ever watched Star Trek? You guys love. All right, I'm a Trekkie, absolutely. Captain Kirk is the man. Anybody that makes out with green aliens, dude, you got my vote right there, man. Whoa. <laughs> All right. Um, my favorite one, their two favorite ones were the Doomsday Machine. And I always love their music. Dun, 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 dun. Beat me aboard, Scotty. And that big tube thing. Commodore Decker. All right, I'm digressing. And the other one was the one with the Gorn, that dinosaur guy. That was cool. Do you know how many times I've seen those episodes? Because they're just cool looking. I want my services to be one of those episodes. I want God so much in this service. It's like I was driving with, I was with Christian. We were driving to Shooters. I like going to Shooters. Shooters, uh huh? Yeah, especially with my son. Ken's a near close second. Or Chick fil A. Oh, Chick fil A. Oh, Chick fil A. How many of y'all get like that when you drive by my church? Your church. Now, it's one thing to say that, but there's things that we're working on so that that becomes, oh my gosh, I'm near the house of God. There's understandings we have to have, and that's you know, what we're talking about today. So back to, look, if I can watch the Gorn, i got to have seen that episode 20-something times. There's got to be some things we've done here. Go back and review, man. Get the stuff in your spirit. I've been at this a long time. It's like a lot of the other guys that are doing really, really great work. All right? We've been at this a long time. And, and when you're here, you can fully expect that God through me is saying something just for you. And uh, that'd be something to make sure you, you get everything out of it, right? Okay, so we're on our church life and culture series. And uh, this one today we're going to be calling, and I kind of already introduced this, we're doing church. And we'll talk specifically about how we do things here. But again, uh, this is some review, but definitely some angles I want to revisit, and especially last week, getting us ready to go into the next step video. So Matthew 16, 18, I wanted to remind us, Jesus said this, upon this rock, I will build my church, and literally, today's vernacular, the gates of hell will not be able to stop me. I'm going to build, and what did we, raise your hand, what is the one key word when we see the word church, ecclesia, what is the main, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? What is the, what's the main term we need to get out of that? It's an assembly. There's no such thing as being a member of the church and not having a local assembly. How many of y'all want revival? I and mean, you all believe in God for an awakening, right? In an awakening, in meetings, you in an awakening, and Rambabu will be here, People can come to Christ, but you're not going to get to know Christ in a single meeting. All right? it's in, he has designed the nature of the kingdom of heaven revolves around local assemblies of called out ones where families are developed. Go and, when Jesus said, go in all the world, did he say go in the world and make believers? 
No, he said, go and make disciples. The local church is huge, the local assembly, is, and we're going to find more and more when Jesus taught that, you know, in terms of the kingdom of heaven, the people that get this thing the most are folks that are prior service. Like the kingdom, how many, when, when, when you hear this phrase, I'm not going to finish it for you, but just go ahead, and you don't have to raise your hand. Jesus is known as the captain of the Lord. He's the Lord of host. Those are spiritual armies. He's the chief general over all generals along with everything else that he does. And the scriptures, the apostle Paul says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're mighty in God. Well, they do pull down strongholds, imaginations, high things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. It, and we'll you know, really nail this down here in just a second, but you have been born in the middle of an unresolved conflict. Mankind was created. Adam and Eve were formed post the fall of Lucifer, but before his judgment. A third of the angels had already left. They'd already gotten this thing in their head where they were being abused. They were victims. They weren't getting the treatment they were supposed to. And so Lucifer himself said, said look, at, look at all that I got and go here. I'm going to be just like the Most High. I'm going to go up there. I'm going to sit right next to him. And I'm going to be just like him. And he talked to a third of the folks to go, you know, God's cheating us. We're victims. He's an occupier and an oppressor. It's the same language. It's the identical same language. And what happened? Yeah, yeah, God is being unfair. Yeah, we need to do something about this. Yeah. <coughs> and understand, the first, the first uh, conflict would never have been trying to violently seize the kingdom from heaven. Understand. Lucifer was full of wisdom. He didn't have eternal wisdom, but in the creation he was, he was perfect and developed in, what, in his understanding of knowledge. No one else besides Lucifer would have known, I can't beat him. I know how I'm created, but what I can do is I can demand my rights. I can demand that I be just like the Most High God. Hey, boys, who wants to go with me? See, that's where it started. He begins to stir up jealousy. The reason why covetousness is one of those, like, multiple times just in the Ten Commandments. Don't do that. You're not allowed to covet your neighbor's house. Your neighbor's good. Guess what? By the way, God's a God of private property. He's a God of reward. And you ready for this? He's a colonizer. Since Adam and Eve were created, man has been colonizing. So if you want to get mad at America, then get mad at Britain, get mad at, mad at India, get mad at Africa, get mad at the entire whole human race, and you want to do, if you want to make a statement, then go pick at everybody. At where you're here as a result of somebody doing that. Well, we're going to find out when it comes to the kingdom of heaven. Listen, we're going to be talking about colonization with a capital C here in a second. Well, Pastor, why are you using those words? Because Satan steals them and puts definitions in your mind that aren't true. He puts definitions in your head through culture when it has nothing to do with what God wants you. And he wants you to have this recoil instead of understanding what is the kingdom saying through these words. We're smarter than him. All right? Upon this rock I will build my church. The gates of hell will not be able to stop me. And we read this verse last week when it comes to what Paul understood in Ephesians chapter 3. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. We'll get this in a little bit. Listen, the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles. Who can tell me what's a Gentile? In context, what is a Gentile? Someone who's not a Jew. You are Gentiles. So the Apostle Paul, you didn't have any idea, earlier on he talked about how we had absolutely no hope in the world until Christ came. We were separated, we didn't have any covenants of promise, we had no hope, we didn't even know what was out there except for maybe a star, a sun, or a piece of rock, I paint a smile on it, or give them a big belly and put it and just throw them a dime and worship them. We didn't know any better. But to us he was sent, but watch this, unsearchable riches of Christ. 
The pulpit is a place where you're supposed to come hear things that are otherworldly and that are going to cause you to see things outside of this world. Don't tell me church is about 20 minutes so you can get your fix and get on out of here again. I'm going to talk about this when we do next steps. Well, I just want to go to a place where they keep it simple. Jesus never kept it simple. There were times he was, but other times he freaked out the entire intelligentsia of the time. Even Peter admitted that Paul's writings, he says, look, he says, these things, there's some things he writes about that's really hard to understand. He says, and people that don't have a clue, they twist them, and then Peter puts at the end of it, just like they do the rest of the scriptures. They knew they were writing the word of God, and Peter knew Paul's writings were the word of God. I'm on this earth to open up concepts and principles. All right, you, you think your latest horror movie's got some supernatural stuff? You open up the manual and you see what's available to you, and you'll put to, Chucky will be put to shame all day. <laughs> right? And to bring to light for everyone, say everyone. You're supposed to be, say this with me, say, I'm supposed to be smarter when I leave today than when I came in. And I'm not leaving till I'm smarter than I was before I came in. Okay? Is there anybody in here that's not an everyone? Through the years, because it's part of my convictions, core values, right here. Praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues, worshiping Jesus, hours. This spot right here. I heard him say so clearly, my people are starving, and I'm not happy with it. Yes, sir, I'll try to help. Okay? I make no apologies if we're here an hour instead of 20 minutes. I don't care what you think. Because the three people that are here, they're hungry for God. And the numbers are showing that kind of mentality in church. You're getting your butts kicked. All right, raise your hand if you're under 20. Raise your hand if you're, raise your hand if you're under 20. Okay? All right. Are you going to raise your hands? Work with me. Don't be all shy in the back. I'm not moving until you raise your hands, boys. Raise your hands. Come on, tell your brother. Knock your brother. You're bigger than he is. Take him out. Raise your hand. Okay? Thank you very much. All right, at least one of you. Thanks for working with me. Put him down. Eight out of ten of you, by the time you finish college, aren't even going to be walking with God anymore because someone played with you and didn't open up the possibilities and what was available to you in Christ. Not on my watch. This is the way it is. I'm getting too old to play. I have fun. But we have a generation, man. I'm t listen, all right? It's a war of fallen angels against human beings. We are different classes of a creation. Mankind is a different class than angels. And it is a war against an angelic class of being and mankind. That's why the second person of the Godhead, who is known as the Logos or the Word of God, or the Lord God in the Garden of Eden, that's who he was, he became a man and still kicked the enemy's butt. Everyone, what is the plan of the mystery hidden through the ages of God? Okay, what is that? That through the church, the manifold wisdom of God would be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. Right now, you always have an audience watching you. Church is not about being here. Church is about displaying how mighty our God is and how overwhelming that victory is that he, that he achieved on the cross. And you see no other message in the word of God. None. And a couple of points I want to remind us of. The very first instance that Jesus used the word, word church, now remember, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not be able to stop me. Who can tell me what the term first principles, what's, what's it mean, what's first principle? All right, first thing, in other words, there's no more, you don't break it down, it's like it, it's the foundation, you don't go any simpler than this. First principles, we're finding out, listen, the word church, that's the first time it's found in the New Testament, Jesus used it. 
watch this, upon this rock I will build my church and they'll all be nice and bake cupcakes and get offended and be hypocrites. And they'll struggle with their flesh and keep thinking about how evil they are. And they'll be so condemned and weak because they're so terrible. And they're wretched people. Only saved by grace, but they're wretched and they're weak and they're wicked. I don't say that, does it? No, first principles. In other words, he attaches the very first thing to building his church that the gates of hell are not going to be able to stop him, meaning the very first instance Jesus used the word church, he mentioned nothing about behavior and learning how to be nice. The Holy Spirit, through Paul, spoke similarly. Jesus spoke of occupation and that nothing or nobody would be strong enough to stop him. That is the first principle. His first discussions of church, teenager and adult alike, is it that there's another kingdom, it's invisible to you right now, but your eyes are going to be open, and we are going to occupy. We're going to colonize. Until we come to terms that the body of Christ is an occupying force on the earth, and, be, and don't get nervous. No one's showing up. If you show up in fatigues next week, I'm personally going to shoot you. <laughs> yes, there's verses, living a quiet and peaceable life. That's all part. Work with me in context, right? All that's in there, and we got three months for this series to talk about all these things. I'm just taking us to first principles so that when you go to work, get up at five, when you take care of your kids... All right, when you go and visit grandma and grandpa in the summer, your lens will be different. Your lens, your focus, why you have even any of these things or do these things, it radically changes when we get out of our mind. Listen, who would want to keep, unless you think that God's impressed with your time card because you made it to church, who would want to go to church if it was just a matter about hearing something nice, you did your time card, now I just want to go about my life? Just give me something good so I can go about my life. I got a question for that. Because that's a big thing in, in church today. Well, just time the service. We got to get people in and out. Are your people, pastor, that are in your church so smart, so developed in spiritual things that they only need 20 minutes from you? And parishioner, are you so brilliant in the things of God that you only got 20 minutes to grace the man or woman of God that's, that's pouring their heart out to give you manna from heaven? You're so developed in spiritual things that you just need a fix for 20 minutes so you can go about your life. You're that developed. I already told you I don't care. <laughs> but it's the truth. Teenagers, eight out of ten of you aren't even going to survive college if you go there because you're going to listen to some professor so, in, so filled and hyped up on Karl Marx. And you thought, sure, you got mad. You wouldn't even come to youth group because we weren't shoving your head in pies or making everything fun all the time and you'll have absolutely nothing. You'll be shooting blanks when they throw Karl Marx at you and you'll think your professor's so smart. Let him get around me. I'll untie him in ten minutes. And I can help you too. Because the number one area of conflict in any generation is thoughts. It's not a gun. It's not a revelation and taking over and things. It's come to that, but that's, that's not what Jesus... We don't need that. Jesus doesn't need your gun. He didn't need your sword. Matter of fact, they took a sword and cut the guy's ear off. And Jesus healed the enemy. So everybody that wants to get all of their guns, and I have plenty. I know some people have got lots of them. All right, how about stop? You're, you're not freaking Rambo. <laughs> you're a son of the Most High God that has access to powers that normal people have no idea. You're not Rambo. And it's fun to sit there and think about, yeah, those people storm, and I'm going to shoot them, and I'm going to get all my armament out, and I'm going to do that. Uh, look, I know what it's like just before you get into a fight, even sparring in Taekwondo. That's not fun. If anybody's ever seen war, they'll tell you what they really felt like when a gun was pointed out. No, as a matter of fact, I know what that's like. How many remember a game that I will never, ever play again? Paintball. Paintball. I will never. 
ever play paintball again. It will never happen. Not only do I think it's disrespectful to want to shoot your pastor or be like me shooting my love, right? But I remember, and I think it was Rap that shot me, and you wear these glass things. And you do, you get amped just knowing people are trying to shoot you, right? Okay? Well, I remember he fired that thing, and he was about as far from there and there, and I came out. And I watched that purple ball... And it was here, and it curved, and it caught me right in the face like that. I never want to feel that again. It's easy to be Rambo while you're sitting in your couch. Listen, our country doesn't need a gun. You know, I got them. Primarily, we need the word of God spoken from the fires of heaven. Okay? Till we come to terms that the body of Christ is an occupying force on the earth being witnessed in the heavens, that all of us without exception are occupied. And it is fun talking about shooting people. <laughs> like I get it. It's because we're men and this is a hoorah church, right? Testosterone is my fr- our friend. I say my Declan drinks testosterone for lunch. He's going to hang Goliath's head on his rearview mirror, okay? Like I get testosterone and conquering but it's unrealistic because our weapons are far more powerful than AR-15. Though AR-15s are very cool. (laughs) If I haven't given you enough reason to leave because I am so breaking your politically correct vocabulary, I have not yet begun to offend you. (laughs) Because once again, your language has been so manipulated to be used against you that you'd rather just be quiet and get pushed around than get involved in this thing. They've created their own language and their own vocabulary, and what they do is then they want to impose this thing like taking a fish tank and dropping it on top of your head, and all of a sudden you're here. You don't belong in that world at all. All right, I think I'm going to get through this sentence. All right, got to get going. Our occup- okay, without exception, we're occupiers and demonstrators of God's marvelous and infinitely varied grace. Our religious service will no doubt appear to be no different than any other religion or worse. Be a laughing stock to those spirits tormenting the souls of our brothers and sisters to whom we have been sent to liberate. Do principalities and powers in the heavenly places see you as a joke? and continual source of entertainment or a threat to their grip on the souls of men. Teenagers, I don't want you to be a joke. I want, de- I want the kingdom of darkness for you to understand that they, you will scare the little hell out of them. But you're not going to learn how to carry that kind of presence if I'm appeasing you third person plural. And whoever's working with our youth or even a regular service and making it so yippy fun versus at times, we got to get into it, man. There's skills that it's imperative that you develop. And men, you're the last people that should be running around going to work in pajamas. You do that on my watch? You're men. And you have a garden to plant. You've got a mountain to take over. You've got something to conquer. All right? And, you're, and you've been made aggressive for a reason. Now, that doesn't mean now you follow the Word of God because my aggressiveness, for example, in marriage, should be to honor and exalt my wife, not do this. But you've been given, you are naturally built to establish something that was never there before. This might get rid of some of you. This might... Yeah, I'm going to give it a shot. One of the latest things is, uh, and it's a bigger issue, it's what Satan thinks of you. Do you know there's such things as doctrines of demons that people will devote themselves? In other words, they'll practice and be really good at teaching them. Air Force Academy just came out. Air Force Academy teaching uh, gender respect and sensitivity are now uh, really emphasizing and expecting folks to not even call their parents mom and dad. 
Okay, you're not a woman, you're a child-bearing person. All right? In the beginning, God made man in his image and in his likeness. Human beings are image bearers. You are not Gen X, you are not Gen Y, you are a man, you are a woman, you are a child of God. Why? Because what the devil wants to do is he wants you to put you in one whole group of a letter instead of an identity. You have an identity. And there are powers that want to herd you over here and teach you, don't fight. Don't be an individual. Success, that's bad. That's patriarchal. Don't strive because you might, because you might oppress somebody. You don't want to have more. You don't want to succeed. You don't want a bigger raise because now that's not equitable. And this thing is smashing and pounding you to be just the same. God doesn't make anybody the same. There isn't a single fingerprint, fingerprint in here that's the same. Even snowflakes are not the same. I'm not talking about like... <laughs> that was fr I just thought about it as I was saying that. I might want to clarify that. Not even snowflakes are the same. But there's powers that want to train you. I've even offended my daughter-in-law. What do you know about that? <laughs> I did. You are my, you're the best daughter-in-law on the planet. And these things are on purpose to beat away your identity. To take away from you what's made you unique in God's eyes as an image bearer. As made in the image of God. And that image, what you've been created to do, is unlike what anybody else in the entire universe, man or angel, could possibly do. The reason why God's a God of private property is because you're responsible for it. And no one's going to stand, no one's going to stand responsible for whether you took care of that or not. He rewards those who diligently seek him. Gain is a principle of God, not uh, um, capitalism. Having more than what you started is godly and it's a spiritual principle. But we have this generation where you are being made feel, you can't even breathe right without being made guilty. And what happens is such a state of confusion is in our culture right now, folks are afraid to even say anything anymore because they don't even want to get into the conflict. And there's this hornet-esque swarm that will just drop on you the moment you try to fight back. The Word of God teaches us how. Because listen, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other name given among men by which they may be saved. And he has invited and joined us into be union with him to cause havoc for the kingdom of darkness on this earth. still here except for my daughter-in-law she come back yet oh there's oh taking oh do i need to pose oh okay i'll stop looking at well because we got to get fresh pictures up at the you know because that's important media we got to advertise not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching uh, and the apostle and Paul said this in Philippians, Yes, and I will rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. My friends, if the mighty apostle Paul could not do it by himself, now he got the Holy Ghost in there, but listen, I need the church. I can't do this by myself. <clears throat> Excuse me, I touched on this last week. There are devils bigger than you are. Well, how can you say that? I have all authority, really. Do you know that when the devil got cast out of someone, it says that they go and get how many more wicked than themselves? There's levels of authority as well. Now, you've been delivered from his power, but listen, sometimes you're going to need two or three to join together against this thing because there are still levels, classifications of spirits, and they have energy, and they have amounts of energy in differing levels. Well, if you get one with a level three and you're a level one, yeah, you have authority, but you better go get two or three together so you can win and execute that authority because right now they can lift more than you. Especially if you don't have time for church, like coming here and learning how to deal with this stuff. If Paul needed the church, we need the church. 
setting our sights, okay, and almost time. I'm doing pretty good. And this is what we finished last week, and I want to remind us, and then we'll get some coffee and do uh, next steps. Three verses about the Apostle Paul and his understanding and his priority for the body of Christ. I am glad when I suffer for you in my body, for I am participating in the sufferings of Christ that continue. Why are they continuing? For his body, the church. God has given me the responsibility of serving his church by proclaiming his entire message to you. Next. This was according to the eternal purpose, as far as he was talking about his calling, uh, that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. So I'm asking you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you. And then lastly, this is what we talked about. I kind of choked up a little bit last week on this one. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you. So we have three, and there's a lot more of them, instances culminating where the Apostle Paul could choose to depart, which means to die, come out of his body and go be with Christ. He could have done that. And to stay, <clears throat> understood what he, understand when he wrote this, he was in prison. He was in a dungeon, man. He was chained up. This thing was a mess. He probably didn't have any clothes. He was in dark cold. He was underneath the earth in this damp, rocky cellar thing, chained to a guard. He had been whipped 39 times, multiple times, had his feet busted with rods, continual persecution, and yet he said, because I care so much for you, instead of having a one-way ticket home, I'm still going to stay. And I asked last week, this is the heart of a man that knew Christ, how many of us have suffered for the body of Christ? And I had a little thing in there last week, some of you think suffering was just getting out of bed in time to be here. Or making your parents miserable because you didn't want to get up in time. See, when we come to Christ and we genuinely understand that that person sitting next to you is an extension of himself worth giving your life for, then we'll have our priorities to come and be here. The Apostle Paul so loved Jesus. You can walk around and say, I love Jesus. How much in church? Oh, I just love Jesus. How much? You... And see, now, again, understand the definition Religion wants to teach you, go to church and go to a particular service. What we're learning is the church is the called out assembly, which is the body of Christ, which means all of us are joints and ligaments. We're living members. Okay, We're not a name, not a name on the back of the seat because we gave a big check. We're living members. And we demonstrate before principalities and powers the manifold wisdom of God. If you love Jesus, if you genuinely, it's like, kind of like someone say, you know, did you know that's a rose bush? Well, it looks like it's got three leaves, and every time I touch it, I want to itch like crazy. No, that's really a rose bush. In other words, if you're a rose bush, you produce something, and if you're not, you're not. Well, I love Jesus. Well, how much do you love being around his people? Yeah. I love Jesus. Well, yeah, because right now most of you haven't seen him yet, and he gives you the warm fuzzies in your stomach. Listen, I've been around Jesus long enough to know I, there's times I don't get warm fuzzies because I have to go be with somebody like you. <laughs> Who, by the time I pour out my heart out, you're already going to get mad and talk about, about me. Go on the internet, tell me how I'm a, a CEO run church. Even though we've poured our heart, why would I want to be around that? Because I love Jesus. Because I love Jesus and I'm learning to love you. <laughs> so what have we learned so far? Time to get some coffee. Just go through our next steps. Get us ready for the month of October. Be careful. Church is not about religious behavioral studies, but two kingdoms in conflict. The one doesn't stand the chance against the other. It is not Jesus and Satan going back and forth like you see in Marvel comics. Okay? 
Jesus goes like this, it's all over. He's letting his plans and his purposes. One of the things he's showing, do you know that the kingdom that you've been given demands incredible grace and humility and boldness and courage? The characteristics you need for the next life you're working on here. He's using this whole fallen world to train you for the next. And when training, when boot camp's over, he's just folding up the whole entire universe and tossing it away. There's no struggle. There's no struggle as far as the power of Jesus, the second person of the Godhead, and a fallen angel. There's no contest. Okay? This is not Marvel Comics. We need each other. No one is individually strong enough to succeed in this conflict. You just can't do it. All right? Jesus won the Garden of Gethsemane. What did he do? Hey, you guys, can some of you guys come with me? This is Jesus. I heard someone say this. They felt that the Lord told them, that Jesus told them, my favorite times on the earth when I was just sitting around with my friends. He's a God of family. Do you know that? He's got a family, friendship. There can be no other priority in this life higher next to knowing Jesus, of course, than to give our lives in service to his body, the church. That person sitting right next to you. Okay? It's fun. You guys ready for a cup of coffee? All right. And, and again, one more time, because I'm, I'm missing a week, and I want to get this done. We're going to take you through our next steps presentation meaning you've all been through that. And then from now on, starting next Sunday, we'll be advertising every week. And you're going to know when you bring someone, they won't be part, partner with the, this church, and you'll know what they're watching and what they're being part of. So it's 11.10, you have five minutes, and we start so we can get out of here at a good time. And it's not a long presentation, but I want to make it happen. So go, get, go to the bathroom, get a cup of coffee, and come on in. This, the service is not over. Awesome, 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 awesome. Excellent. So what we're about to do is we're going to show, now this is when someone, when you know, um, has been coming to the church for a little while, this is what they'll see on our every first Sunday of the month. We have our next steps. I don't want to call it a presentation, but I'll, maybe an invitation. The Apostle Paul, I quote the verse, when he, was, uh, he talked to the Philippian church, and he used the word partnership. He was celebrating and admiring and thanking folks for being partners. And uh, if we haven't established by now the importance of you, of every child of God finding the, a local assembly of called out ones, we, every single person belongs in a local assembly in a local church. That's just the way it is. People say, well, you know, that's, and I, you've had people uh, just like, well, that's all about organized religion. Every letter in the New Testament was written to organized religion. It was written to assembled churches, individual churches, and at times even within regions. These people were getting together. And the enemy knows if he can isolate folks, he causes problems. So what this is, is for, and I want you to see this for two reasons. During the month of October, one is that uh, we're going to talk about different things that we're doing here at GHCC and give invitation and expectation, hey, let's find out you know, uh, how we can serve you best and how you can help out as well. You're going to find you have individual talents that were never meant to be given alone to your work or as a hobby in your basement. But we all have gifts that are, we're supposed to benefit as well, okay? And that being the case, now that you've been through this, You'll be familiar with where we're going. Uh, I'm leaving for Dallas today. I've got to. I'm flying a brand new Challenger 650 uh, from a fellow. I looked him up on who I'm flying, and uh, he's got a, he's a billionaire, and he gives charitable donations to the tunes of tens of millions at a time. He needs to meet me. And I also want to model that. I'm not afraid of money, and I've demonstrated to the Father that I'm a faithful steward and really great giver, and I want to do more. Where I'm going with that, I'm flying to Dallas, and I'm flying them to Teterboro tomorrow. When we fly, I already know I'm taking off out of Manchester, going to BWI, being picked up and there, and then flying to Dallas. I know where I'm going. I know what time. I know what kind of equipment I'm on. Well, your local church, you should know where your church is going. 
You should know where they're going. And every church has a different calling. In the book of Revelation, each church had a different calling. We have ours in particular. And so that's what this is about. So we're going to talk, it's broken up into three. And this is what they see every month. <clears throat> First section, this is where we came from. Second one, this is what we do, how we think. And three, this is where we're going. And then I'll open up for questions at the end and then zoom, zoom, off we go. So are we ready? All right, so go ahead and hit play. Turn the lights down, please, so people can listen. Turn down. Oh, stop. Hit pause. Hit pause. Hit pause. Hit pause. Rewind. Just a little plug. The soundtrack music you're hearing, that's me. I actually wrote this to be a soundtrack for some of our stuff. It's only a minute of the stuff, but like that song and all the guitar playing, that is, I wrote that. Okay, so turn it up. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Start from the beginning. Greetings, everyone. How are you doing? Pastor Joe Johnson here. I'm the senior pastor here at uh, Gosstown Harvest Christian Church. And on behalf of myself, our entire family and staff, uh, we want to welcome you to our First Steps series. And uh, if you're here, then you've heard the announcements that uh, this is our opportunity to uh, spend some time with you and uh, let you get to see where we come from, uh, what it is that we're working on getting done, and where we want to go. And uh, before we get started, what I want to do is uh, let me just read a passage of scripture. This is the Apostle Paul, and he's uh, talking to one of the uh, cities that he had planted, uh, a thriving church. The city was uh, named Philippi, and he said this in chapter 1, starting in verse 3. He says, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always and in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And uh, it's imperative, and whether you're in business or whether you watch the Patriots or whatever, or including the body of Christ in a local church, notice how he used the word partnership. Uh, you get things done when you're a team. And what we want to do is we want to invite you to be part of our team and uh, partner with us. And of course, if we're going to do that, uh, then you should probably know some things about us. And uh, we're making an opportunity of course, for us to get to learn about you. So uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to introduce you to uh, where we've been, a little bit of uh, my resume, what it is that we've uh, uh, been through and accomplished up until now. Then uh, we'll talk about where we are, what we're doing today, what it is that uh, as you're with us, uh, the different ministries that we have going on, uh, the purposes for the things that we do. And then uh, lastly, we're going to talk about where we're going. And uh, just like any journey, uh, a journey presupposes there was a beginning, but then there's a destination. And uh, certainly our church here at Gosstown Harvest Christian Church, uh, we're very clear. And um, as far as where it is we want to go, what uh, we know the Lord has uh, placed us here for, and uh, we're inviting you to be on this journey, but make no mistake, we have uh, certain destinations that uh, we're going to arrive to as well. So uh, I trust that you'll get your cup of coffee, relax, and spend a few minutes with me. And uh, again, I'm really glad you're joining us. Let's get going. Well, as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, uh, we're going to break this down into uh, three sections. And we're going to start right now talking about where we've been. 
And uh, just a little bit of uh, background on myself as of, I was born in uh, May of 1963. So as of this recording, I'm 58 years old. I've been in the ministry over 30 years now. Um, I was an assistant pastor for almost five years, assistant pastor and a youth pastor. And uh, we pioneered this church. This church started, Goff Sound Harvest Christian Church started with seven people in, uh, in my living room. And my first pulpit was an ironing board. And uh, certainly we've come a long ways from then. And uh, uh, what we, how we got here and there, um, I ended up doing a stand after I got out of uh, uh, high school. Uh, I wanted to go into the Air Force Academy. I wanted to fly F-15s really, really, really bad. And so uh, I didn't know any senators or congressmen or so on. So uh, I knew that they had openings. If you go in as enlisted, that they have openings to apply for the academy. And I did that. I had all my endorsements uh, from all my generals and uh, everything was going well until we took, uh, I took my flight physical. And because of some things that were going on and some histories, uh, it was determined that, that they were not going to be able to let me fly jets. And so I had a decision to make, and uh, as I thought about some things, uh, it just didn't seem right to pursue anymore. So I did my enlistment. I worked on uh, avionics on uh, KC-135s, B-52s. Well, even back then, the Lord, it was obvious as he had his hands on my life. The scriptures say that the steps of a righteous man are order of God. And within a year or so, I ended up meeting the woman that was eventually going to be my wife. And uh, as of this recording, uh, coming up on 37 years. And uh, 37 amazing, adventurous years, but uh, wouldn't trade a day of them. And so it ended up working out. I uh, met my wife and uh, we got married while I was in the service. Uh, had our first child and my background, of course, was in electronics and and engineering and uh, when I got out of the service I worked uh, moved to Nashville worked for Rockwell International and it was at that time I got involved in a really good local church and uh, as I just was spending more time learning about God and learning how to talk to him in prayer um, I started feeling things in my heart that um, I'm, I wasn't on this earth to fix electrons and uh, through some prayer and some study and talking to my pastor at the time and certainly Robin, uh, it was clear that the Lord wanted me to go into the ministry. And so uh, we packed up after we uh, had determined, yeah, this is what you're supposed to do. Uh, we packed up in a small little trailer and moved to uh, Broken Arrow, Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I graduated from uh, Rayma Bible College, Rayma Bible Training Center, and I uh, majored in uh, missions and uh, church planning and so we came back in the church that i was fellowshipping with the household of faith christian church over in uh, amherst uh, and worked with the pastor jim burbank uh, just tremendous years of uh, i was the um, assistant pastor but i was also i think i mentioned earlier i was also the youth pastor and so we worked there uh, for just under five years and it was about that time that oh i'm sorry uh, about four years into it and we've been spending a lot of time fasting and praying and just and just seeking god one of the things you're going to hear regularly here at Gosstown harvest christian church is this stuff is real and the church is supposed to be built or the primary purpose of a church is to experience god and to experience his presence not necessarily build a business or a corporation or and try to employ those things and trust them to build your church. We need God and we need his presence. And that does not come from marketing. That comes from relentlessly going after God to know him. And so extended times of prayer and fasting. And uh, one day I started feeling in my heart, uh, I'd heard some things about Gosstown. And uh, at the time, and I think the thing that really triggered is a popular word nowadays, uh, one of the things that really triggered me was I had heard that the high school in Goffstown was nicknamed Suicide High because there had been just, uh, I think it was the highest suicide rate in the state or something. Like that. Anyway, whatever it was, I wasn't happy about hearing that. And so through some more fasting and praying, uh, it was on our heart to come and plant the church here. And so we did. Uh, I'm uh, easily the longest tenured minister uh, here in, in Goffstown, and I've been the senior, I'm the, found, the founding pastor and uh, the senior uh, pastor here. We planted this church in 19, March of 1996, 
And so uh, since then, uh, we've grown as not just a local church, but, and we'll talk about this and where we're going, we've been involved in uh, church planning. We've planted two other churches, Montpelier, Vermont, uh, actually technically Barry, Vermont, and uh, Laconia. And uh, we've been involved in uh, business. My background, remember I talked about my uh, background in aviation, going to the Air Force, and I didn't mention earlier, I've been flying since I was five years old. My uh, grandfather and my uncle were pilots, so I've had a love for aviation my entire life. Well, uh, during the time of this ministry and, and, and church planning, uh, those uh, desires to start flying um, came back. And I'll keep the story short. And as a pilot, trust me, you can make it really long, but making it short, um, I got back involved in aviation. I got my all my pilot's ratings. I have all my flight instructor ratings. We started a company in two years, became the largest flight school uh, in the region. I taught folks how to, from MIT and Harvard, even how to fly. We had folks coming from Maine and Massachusetts, these areas to come and learn from us. Uh, we uh, were a satellite operation. We had a, a Learjet, Lear 35, that we were uh, managing. And uh, flying and aviation have grown to where I've flown uh, not just uh, Part 135, which is a charter. I've flown a number of the Red Sox. I've flown some very uh, famous people, uh, some very pri wealthy private owners as well. And even today, I, I still fly a Challenger 605 for a uh, Cor Massachusetts corporation, and the airplane is uh, uh, based right here at Manchester. So uh, aviation, and you'll hear more here in a little bit. So with, with church and seeking heaven and understanding his kingdom taking place here on earth, but also understanding business and how, to, and how paychecks work and uh, how to... Uh, be involved in another world outside of just church. Uh, there's, these are two areas that uh, God's really blessed me in. And you'll hear this a lot here in this church that, uh, you know, knowing Jesus and walking with Jesus, the end game is not simply having church on Sunday, but it's learning how as his sons and daughters in Christ that we have our influence in this world long after we're done raising our hands uh, during worship. So uh, there's a quick history of uh, where we've come from, the things I'm involved in. Um, oh, I didn't mention uh, I have four children and now uh, four grandchildren, and uh, we all still love each other. We're all still very, very close. And um, raising my family, uh, we were intentional on doing that. You know, my schedule was pretty full, and uh, it took some work, but uh, we've proven that you can relentlessly pursue God, you can relentlessly uh, go after your dreams and um, exercise and cause to grow the gifts that he's caused on the inside of you. But it doesn't have to cost you your family. Um, it doesn't have to cost you your sanity, though I know there are some that would question that. But uh, we've been able to demonstrate that you can go just full tilt into God. And not only do you not have to lose anything, but his promises about the things that you gain when you go all out for him, uh, we've proven that those verses are true. So uh, again, I trust you've uh, learned a little bit about us. And uh, the next thing, let's start talking about uh, where we are, what it is that we're accomplishing today. Well, welcome back. And uh, just a few minutes ago, you were listening to uh, let me talk about uh, my bat, my personal background, my family. Uh, not just I don't want to call them interests because um, I know at least with me, with with the Lord, I don't have hobbies. Um, I believe that what we have on the inside of us are not hobbies; they're talents, and He wants a return on them. And so, though I may enjoy certain things and relax during certain things, I'm always cognizant that that's in there because He gave that to me, and I always want to give it back to him. And we were able to, you know, in this last session, I was talking about not just pursuing him uh, in his word and as a minister, but also pursuing him in the gifts that he's given me. And that includes uh, certainly aviation uh, as well. And so God has been good and we've seen some really great things. So let's just, let's talk about just for a few minutes, uh, Golfstown Harvest Christian Church and, and the church that you're in now and what it is that we're doing. Uh, first and uh, foremost on Sunday, our Sunday service is really any service that we do, but our Sunday services are geared for uh, folks be able to either come up, coming off the street, first time being in a church 
or for those who've been around Jesus a long time, uh, they know their stuff and they want to learn something. We're our Sunday morning services are geared so that wherever you're at, you can come in and you're going to be with God. And notice I didn't, and I want to be careful. I want you to pay attention. I said that I want that we need to be with God. You're not here just to learn and hear something about Him. And uh, that's a mistake a lot of folks make is that they'll equate their knowledge of either his word or principle, spiritual principles. They'll equate that with knowing God. Well, that's, that'd be the same as saying that you, you read, you've read some of my email posts and thinking you know me when you've never shaken my hand before. Well, Sunday service is an opportunity for us to be with God and enjoy God in the name of his son, Jesus, and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, and also for God to enjoy us. We enjoy him as his children and for uh, for our father in the name of Jesus to enjoy being with his children. And so uh, from our worship, uh, our time of worship, and, and this is free open worship. In other words, we have songs that we'll sing, but uh, it's meant to wherever you're at, however you express yourself, this is your opportunity um, to be able to just love on Jesus learn about him as you talk to him or sing to him. And then, uh, of course, we have uh, our teaching. I'll teach between 45 minutes and maybe an hour, hour and 10. I do believe this. I'm a firm believer of that. And you'll hear people say, you know, I just want things to be, I just want things simple. And, um, you know, I want to challenge that. And if you've been here any amount of time, I think you're finding this out, is that, you know, Jesus didn't keep it simple all the time. The writers of the New Testament didn't keep it simple all the time. And I'm convinced that the local church and the pastor or those that, you know, are behind the pulpit that, yes, Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so is great when you're six. Um, and certainly we want to be reminded of those things. But there's a lot of things in that book we call the Bible, the book that we're supposed to understand. And I believe it's been to uh, the detriment of. Of Christianity that uh, we have folks, even ministries, that are so determined to keep it at C-spot run level that uh, it's really causing harm in the individual, in the family. And I'm going to submit, if you just look around, our culture is paying a severe price from uh, Christians not be able to not just keep up, but to be able to trump and checkmate uh, the ideas uh, that are out there that are anti-him. And so on Sunday mornings, I don't, I'm don't. i just letting you know, I don't apologize for getting into some things that are going to cause you to think uh, for maybe even weeks at a time. And um, my interest is in folks experiencing God, but also knowing his ways. And I'm telling you, you guys, we can't, we're not going to be able to have that uh, with uh, time 20 minute services. So uh, going here, you would have seen it already. My concern is, is that you leave here having learned, not simply leave here going, well, that was kind of cool and that was that was nice. Uh, our brains have been given to us uh, not to be checked at the door, but to be uh, educated. Uh, faith is, there's no such thing as blind faith. You'll hear that regularly here. Faith is meant to be educated. You're educated in the truth. You critically reason and work out with the Holy Spirit what you've heard, and then and then your eyes get open up. It's like, okay, yeah, I, I believe that because, now that's where faith comes. And so back to our Sunday morning, certainly we have our times of praise and worship, but uh, our services, I'm here to challenge you. And um, and to be there's two compliments that we get the most out of this ministry. One is how much how almost right away folks feel like they're at home, and we want that, and we want this to be family, not a place you go to check in and check out. We want that. And then second of all is I've heard regularly through 30 years in the ministry specifically um, since uh, I founded this church that if you go there. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart. You're going to learn something. And there's an expectation there that um, we don't dabble with God. And that's really, really great because obviously by fa the Father sending his son, Jesus, he's not dabbling with us either. And so uh, 
That's what's in our heart as far as our Sunday morning service and the teaching and the worship. Uh, of course, we have our children's ministries uh, to take care of your children. And uh, the processes are easy. And when you talk to our guest services and greeters, they'll tell you, or, or ushers, they'll tell you how all that works. Uh, we have our cafe. Uh, we always have uh, coffee and donuts before and after service. And uh, one of uh, just another really, really great compliment. We had a dear friend of ours who's a pastor of a very large church, and he, in, in uh, the organization I'm, uh, that I'm with, that I'm ordained with, and that's uh, Rama Ministerial Association International, Kenneth Hagen Ministries, that, uh, and he troubleshoots churches. And uh, when he was with our church, uh, he, he just watched. And uh, this is what he said. He says, I don't have anything to correct your church on. He says, one of the one of the strongest things that I've seen in your fellowship is that people don't leave after service. And that was an accurate observation, and we're intentional on that. If this is our family, not just an assembly, but this is our family, then we want to be together. We actually love each other. And so that's another thing as well. Please take advantage of those things uh, before service and after service. You don't have to be in a hurry to leave because we've got some really good folks. And I'm going to submit if you're here, then you're part of those really good folks. And so, uh, again, uh, welcome to Goffstown Harvest Christian Church. Uh, these are things that we've got going on here on uh, Sunday mornings, uh, kind of um, our vision, mindset, and how we do services. And um, so the next thing we'll talk about is where we're going. I'll see you in just a second. Well, greetings once again. And uh, as I just mentioned, um, we're going to finish things up talking about where we're going. We talked about our history, uh, my history, and uh, as far as uh, you know, knowing the Lord and church and ministry. Uh, in the last section, we talked about you know what are we about like now? What are the services like? What are we trying to accomplish during the services? What's available? And so now, what I want to do is just I'm just going to spend a couple minutes talking to you about, and in the introduction, I talked about a journey, and being partners with us on this journey. And a journey presupposes that there was a beginning, there's the travel part, but then you're going somewhere. And so just a few things that are gonna be really important to know about us first is that um, I've been very fortunate in traveling around the world multiple times. I've literally stood in front of hundreds of thousands of people at a time. Um, I've been fortunate to either witness or be used to administer every New Testament miracle that's in there, except for lepers. I've never seen a leper, and uh, I haven't raised anybody from the dead. But blind eyes, deaf ears, um, cripples, and uh, I mean provable, not just, demonst not just uh, demonstrated, but doctors report provable miracles. I've been very, very blessed to see. And I've said many times before, I'm a haunted man. I I can't, as the senior pastor and as a minister and as a, as a son of God that's here on the earth to get something done, I'm a haunted man. I can't have seen those things and not expect them to happen here, even in New England, which uh, the uh, the numbers demonstrate that uh, this town in Manchester is the fourth least churched area in the entire United States. Well, I'm not going to accept that that has to stay that way. And I'm a haunted man. And so where we're going is, and you'll hear about uh, just when we talk about, you know, seeking heaven defined is uh, extended times of just praying. We believe in the supernatural. We believe in the gifts of the spirit that are uh, here. Um, in other words, that when God shows up, he does his God thing. He's who he is, and God's normal is supernatural to us. God's normal to him, we call miraculous, but that's normal to him. And so uh, I'm believing and expecting for a local church that has a lot more regular demonstrations, because at the end of the day, when you talk about miracle, what is a miracle? A miracle is someone who's really hurting got, gets help, and they get help from means that are way beyond what's going on here on the earth. And so uh, where we're going is, is we're believing the living God that Gosstown Harvest Christian Church is going to be a place where astounding demonstrations of his power take place. 
that there'll be no question whatsoever that if you go there, you're going to experience God, not just hear something really, really cute or hear something that makes you think a little bit, though obviously those things are important. Um, we really were hungry for God. And we're hungry to have a fellowship, a local church. And we're certainly not the only ones that believe this. I mean, this is this is not novel. Uh, there's a lot of really great ministries that have experienced the same things. They want the same things. And we have tremendous relationship with these people. But uh, we're convinced New England, uh, that God has very special plans for New England. She's been dark for quite a while now. And, uh, you know, you just can't, you can't beat God. And I'm convinced that uh, we're getting set up. We're getting set up for God to do amazing things. And what he does it through people. So that means you and me. So there's training. I, I use the term regularly, skill sets that we can develop so that we can see more and more of these things, experience more and more of these things, which means more and more people are being helped. As well, the second thing uh, that's really important to us, and I mentioned it uh, in one of the previous sections, that we had planted other churches before. Any kind of visitation of God is always going to result in the growth of the local church. And what I mean by that is people can come to meet Jesus at a single event, but then the single events are not how you get to know him as Lord, Savior, as a person. It's the local church that does that. And the local church was never supposed to be replaced with Google or YouTube. Now you can learn some things, but we're meant to be around each other. We're meant to assemble. We're meant to be a family. And so where I'm going with that and expecting uh, that there are amazing plans here in New England, we don't have enough, we don't have enough local churches yet. There's just not enough. Uh, when God just moves across the area, so many people will come to his so many people. I mean, hearts are gonna, they're gonna come to their senses, right? Well, they need to have, there need to be places where they can go and they meet, where they can meet God. And, and there are not near enough local churches in New England going up into Maine, maybe going into uh, South Africa, South America as well. As I mentioned before, I've been all around the world. And there's a real need for strong local churches um, for people to get discipled and, and know God experience God and then go out and do the same thing. So I said all that to say, part of this journey, this is a church planting ministry. It's part of our DNA. Uh, we've done it. And I know that this ministry is has been birthed and we're continually growing her so that when the day comes that, uh, you know, Hey, where's Pastor Joe today? Well, he, he, he's up in northern Maine in a town of like 500 people. And uh, some really cool things in God are happening. They don't have a church, and so he's planning a church up there, and so is some of our team. That's where we're going. That's, I know that's why I'm here. I know that's why this ministry is formed. And so this should, be, this should be exciting to you to know that you're going to grow from, I'm going to experience and know God, to hey, I can be part of a team that's actually going to do more here in New England than, than simply here. I can be part of that. I'm partnering with a ministry uh, that's, uh, whose vision is larger than just this local area. And I would, I would submit that that's a blessing for you. Like, uh, you partner with us, and that's going to presuppose that you're partnering with us as this is where the Lord wants you to be, to be called to a church planting pioneering ministry is a is a tremendous privilege because it takes you out of certainly your own world thrives but it takes you out of that to have much greater influence and uh, again we're inviting you to partner with us as we do these things and so the the end game of Gosstown Harvest Christian Church as a ministry and myself as a minister uh, the end game is certainly this is our home. This is where we travel out of. But the end game is through up, throughout uh, New Hampshire, uh, Maine, uh, Canada as well, is to go into these just outlying small towns and be a blessing to these folks. Um, but not just having really great Bible studies, but as we mentioned before, I've seen the power of God. I've experienced the power of God in my own life, in my own body. I've certainly seen these things before. And you know what? 
God is good all the time. The devil's bad all the time. The devil hates people, and he's come up with myriads of ways to beat people up and hurt them and kill them. And in the name of Jesus, whatever his weapons are, we've got more. And we're inviting you to be part of a, a mechanism in God that's going to go free a bunch of people in a bunch of different areas and make a difference so that when our time is over and our generation has passes and goes to be with him, uh, the world as we know it is in a much different place. And so um, I think that's about it. So we've caught us up on uh, where we're from, what we're doing, and there was just a uh, just a quick introduction on where we're going. And so now uh, that I'm finished, now whether it's me there in the room or our team, that's an opportunity for please take advantage of that and ask all the questions that you might have, um, get to know us. But uh, make no mistake, this is a really great ministry. I got no business being the pastor, but I don't believe that. This is a really great ministry, and uh, we believe that it would not just be our honor, but I'll, I'll use the word. I believe that it would be a privilege for you to partner with us as well and get some really great things done in God uh, in this generation. So thank you for spending time with us. Uh, God bless you, and uh, I look forward to seeing you uh, the next Sunday service. Take care. Are you there? I played more guitar at the end of that. <laughs> we're still going to get out of here before 12, so we're all finished. So, so that, now everybody's been through next steps. You know where we've been from? Robin, wasn't she like the cutest thing when we were in the service? You know, was? Yeah. No, isn't she still the cutest thing? <laughs> And uh, but now just seeing that within it, and each part is ten minutes, twenty nine minutes long. But now, when folks have gone through that, and now you have seen it, you'll hear things. Now you'll have more of my vocabulary. When I talk, you go, "All right, I, I get why you're saying that." So uh, that set us up. That has set this church up for going in October and November um, when you bring uh, families and so on, and we invite them to partner and part of our family. They'll see that. Uh, also, in that, we'll, it'll be done in the uh, other room that we've turned into like a living room kind of setting. And uh, I think most of you've been around here a long time. It's, it's not even ten till yet. Real quick, any and we're done. But any questions at all about, because we're going to open it up. It's a conversation. The people will be Lacey and uh, Christian and Lacey. They're going to be uh, heading up our next steps. But as you're listening, any quick questions at all? That even if you've been around for a while, it's like, you know, I didn't know that about you or, or anything. Any questions at all before we go? Anything at all that you want to know? Yeah, Bill. Yes, that's an excellent question. We have a couple of them. I haven't chosen the one I like yet, but I think that's a great question. He was asking, is there a service that we will be able to say, hey, you know what, on top of this, you go watch that. That's really going to get you in, into the heart of, of this ministry. That's a great question. Uh, who else? Uh, a lot of that's going to happen. You're going to start hearing a lot about uh, home groups. we got home groups ready uh, for starting next, uh, uh, probably the middle of this month. I'm supposed to talk to some folks this, but we, uh, the, after this service to make sure everybody's good. But we're ready to start those. That's going to be a huge family gathering event. You're going to hear more about that uh, the fa after Pastor Yoda leaves. Anybody else? Real quick. You ain't been here two years? Listen, I go to churches where they're there for four hours. It hasn't even been two hours yet. I hope you're not in a hurry. I don't want to ask a question because I think I need to get out of here. Look, we're inviting you. If this is your home, you should probably make sure you're hearing everything you need to hear to know if it's right. So anybody else before we go? Am I? All right. Very good. Hi, this is Pastor Joe again, and I trust that you enjoyed our service. I believe that you learned more about God, you learned more about His kingdom, that you understand more of His word. And at the end of the day, what makes that amazing is we can walk more close with our God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So if there's anything we can do to serve you, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Of course, our Sunday morning services are at 10 o'clock. Our information is on the website. Please make sure you check it out. And I'm going to look forward to seeing you, serving you, journeying together with you in this generation to see the goodness of God now and forever and ever.
God bless you. I look forward to seeing you real soon.